Well, hey guys, I've had quite a few people asking me about the wine and how it's coming along, so I figured I'd give you a quick update. Now, this is the apple orange wine that I made from juice and applesauce, and I started it on 11 20 2012. And today is 4-8-2013. This has been sitting in these jugs for about three months, so it's ready to transfer. Uh, it's actually ready to be bottled at this point. I put these little tags on there. Just to uh, remind myself of when I racked it and such. I'll take those off. Now this here is uh, some canned plum wine made from Michigan plums that I made. I didn't do a video on this one, but I did use wine yeast for this. This here is the maple nanny berry wine that I made. I made a video on that and showed how I made it. And another thing I want to show with this is I've had a lot of people ask about the... It seems like there's a lot of concerns over using bread yeast versus wine yeast. So I'm just going to show you what I've got. I mean, the apple orange was made using bread yeast. It doesn't taste yeasty or bready or anything like that. It fermented to dryness. It's 10 to 12 percent alcohol. The canned plum wine was made using EC1118 yeast, which is a wine yeast. It fermented to dryness, and it tastes great and everything else. The maple nanny berry, that was made using bread yeast. It fermented to dryness as well. Now the one thing I want to point out here is we have uh, the apple wine, which is cloudy. And what that is, it's called pectic haze. Because when you make wine with certain fruits, you may want to or need to add pectic enzyme at the start of the process. And what it does is it breaks down the pectin in the fruit and allows that yeast and stuff to get in there to allow that pectin to settle out of there. I didn't do that with this, so this is going to be cloudy and it's probably going to be like that forever. But it still tastes good and it's still good wine. This one, the can plum, I actually used the, the pectic enzyme to break down that pectin and you can see it cleared right up. Now, the maple nanny berry wine, I didn't use any pectic enzyme, and I used bread yeast with this. And you can see it's nice and clear as well. And if I put my hand behind here, hopefully you can see my hand right through that bottle. It's nice and clear. Same thing with the maple nanny berry. Nice and clear. So they all three turned out good. The apple used bread yeast. The plum used wine yeast, and the maple nanny berry used bread yeast. All fermented to dryness, all are 10 to 12 percent alcohol, which is the standard for wine, and all of them taste great. Now, since this one's been sitting for three months, take me just a minute here. Let's go ahead and pop the airlock. And give it a taste test. Smells like wine. Tastes like wine. That tastes great. I'll go ahead and drink that one. And I'll just keep it in the refrigerator until it's finished. What's a wine video if you don't do a taste test? Anyway, I just wanted to give a quick update because I had a lot of people asking. And just show you what's coming along. I'm doing one gallon batches now. It seems easy. And there's a lot of recipes out there for doing one gallon batches of wine. 
using canned fruit, whole fruit, and even uh, fruit juice. So there's a lot of versatility. These wine jugs are cheap. All the equipment is cheap. And uh, I think it's a great hobby. And hopefully people out there give it a shot. It's a lot of fun. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all the comments and support.